We're going to start with a super chat from Bent FPV. Thank you for a $10 super chat, Bent FPV. What's your honest opinion about Walksnail? I've heard that the chipset in Walksnail is more capable than the current DJI. Do you think Walksnail will get past the current DJI system? Um, Bent FPV, uh, the chipset, the hardware that Walksnail is using is capable of doing great things. Um, I think it uses, it's, it's said to use H.265 encoding. Uh, which is better than the, the H.264 encoding used by the DJI V2 system. The new DJI goggles, the Goggles 2, and the O3 Air unit in the Avada are also said to use H.265. So from a sort of technology perspective, you could argue that the Walk Snail is more comparable to the new DJI system than to the DJI FPV V2. Um, but... As, as we can see, when we try to use the system in the real world, the, um, the technology itself is not the be-all, end-all of the system performance. And my honest opinion is that Walksnail has not reached a level where I would prefer it to the DJI V2 system. Um, I haven't done extensive testing of the very latest firmware that is going around. Uh, frankly, I have taken a little bit of a breather um, when it first came out, it was very, very interesting and very exciting to try every new firmware that they put out. And, uh, you know, after a while I thought to myself, okay, let's, uh, let's do something else with my time for now and let's check back in in a few weeks. But the last firmware that I tried, the 720p performance, the 720p 25 megabit per second performance was pretty solid. Still, I think not quite as good as DJI, especially because at 1200 milliwatts, it didn't seem to do well compared to 700 milliwatts. At 700 milliwatts, I think it was under the right conditions, you could argue it was as good or better than DJI. I think that kind of goes both ways. Um, when you increase the Walk Snail VTX to 1200 milliwatts, it didn't seem to get better and it suggests perhaps that they're they're overdriving the amplifier or something else is going on like it's not necessarily a given in an rf system that pushing more power into it will inherently give you better range so dji at at 1200 milliwatts uh i think is just definitively better than walk snail at 700 milliwatts or 1200 milliwatts in addition, when I went from 25 to 50 megabits per second, I didn't see a big jump in perform in image quality. And I felt like the link got less stable, like it was dropping and coming back up again inconsistently, whereas at 25, it was more solid and stable. And I didn't feel like at 1080p, it was actually giving better image quality. Uh, and all of these things are things that they can improve. There are a lot of little knobs and dials inside that chipset that they can tweak, and they are tweaking, to try to get the best possible performance in the widest range of conditions. But I don't think they're there yet. At least they weren't on the last firmware that I tried. In addition, the DJI hardware, the Vista and the Air unit, but mostly the Vista, is as close to bulletproof as anything in FPV possibly could be. It is extremely difficult to kill those things. Not impossible. But compared to a typical piece of FPV hardware, they are indestructible. And that really matters because when you're spending $150, $160 or whatever on a VTX and a camera, by God, you want it to last. So all in all, Walksdale has a lot of potential. There are reasons to choose them. And that mostly come down to political reasons. Um, like who is going to best serve the FPV community. Some people believe that DJI doesn't best serve the FPV community. Um, I don't have that opinion myself, but uh, some people do. Some people just don't want to put anything with DJI's name on it in their, in their flight bag. Um, I think that if DJI stopped existing then I would probably choose Walk Snail as my second choice. I think that it is good enough that I could use it on a day-to-day -day basis, and it would be better for me than analog and better for me than HD Zero. 
all things considered. But um, as long as DJI V2 exists, uh, that's I think that's better, especially now that the price is so much lower for DJI. So that's my current take. Will Walksdale pass the current DJI system? They have the potential to do that. They have the potential to do that. The hardware is capable of doing that. I believe that. It's just a question of... The problem is that DJI has enormous engineering resources, knowledge, and experience. And it'd be like saying, listen, Bardwell, Bardwell, in, uh, in six months, you're going to race Alex Vanover. And if you lose, we're going to cut off your pinky finger. Yeah. And if you win, you get $10 million. Okay, start practicing. Now, in six months, if I'd spent the whole next six months practicing, would I beat Alex Vanover in a race? <laughs> no. Wouldn't happen. Vanover could just sleep for, the, for six months, sleep and drink beer, show up hungover the day of the race, and probably still beat me. And that's the situation in some respects. That's the situation that Walksnail is in. I'm exaggerating for comedic effect. Um, some people have speculated, and I don't know if this is true, but some people have speculated that some of the founders of Walksnail were, used to work for DJI once upon a time. So that deep engineering bench that DJI has, well, some of them might be at Walksnail right now. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. I'm not saying that's true. I'm just saying that's a rumor I've heard. So the point is that that the question, will Walksdale beat DJI? DJI is a damn powerful competitor. They make damn good stuff. And they make good stuff just repeatedly. They just keep making bangers. So I think that's... I think Walksdale should focus on making the best system they can. And if they're focused on beating DJI... It feels like that's much, much harder to achieve. <clears throat> okay. 